<laughs> anyway, I'd like to welcome everyone, and in particular, I'd like to welcome our first speaker in the Alumni Talks uh, series that actually she inspired <laughs> completely randomly uh, by uh, having, having an opportunity to visit Austin and knowing Deborah yes. from the art department. So I'm not, I've already been instructed not to introduce Linda other than to say this is Linda. Um, but I did want to, uh, uh, since she's an alumni who hasn't been back in a long time, um, she'll say more about that. I wanted to oh, you know, give her a little uh, package of uh, token souvenirs so, from you. that uh, for our That's appreciation. And to thank her for visiting us all the way. Up. Thank all of you for coming. So the rest okay, is. So you're is you're going to be the slide manager. You volunteered, so I'm. <laughs> so um, we can wait on the lights for just a little. Okay. Thank you very much, Julie. Um, yes. I, I'm an alum, alumni from here. Um, I am currently. I'll go backwards in my chronology. I am chair of architectural landscape interiors at Otis College of Art and Design. I've been there for 12 years, and I created the program from what had previously been an environmental design program from teacups to buildings, which seemed insane, I mean, kind of crazy, to uh, focusing it to still what is multidisciplinary, to these three fields that are absolutely synthetic, related, absolutely integrated, the fields of architecture, landscape, interiors. Prior to that, I was chair of interior architecture at Woodbury University, that's in Burbank. That's how I got to Los Angeles from Chicago. Um, at Chicago, I taught at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago in the foundation program. And I taught at the university, started teaching at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Just actually accidentally, this is how I began that sort of trajectory into education and ultimately now administration, was just being invited to teach a drawing class at my alma mater, the University of Illinois at Chicago, where I received a Master of Architecture degree. Um, I'm a licensed architect, first in Illinois, and then in California. Um, once I got that invitation to teach, I discovered I liked it. I hadn't thought of it. I liked it, and, I, and I'm going to backwards it, uh, forwards now. Then I taught the Art Institute, and then just a desire to leave Chicago, uh, applied for that job at Woodbury with a year and a half of teaching experience, and I got it. So I've been an administrator for over 12 years, and it has become like the greatest project ever. You know, I am creating a curriculum and creating, you know, this sort of venue for students to move on into actually in this case three professions. I am mirroring my own practice. I have a very boutique practice as I'm a full time educator. Uh, and I do architecture, landscape and interiors in my own projects all together. Um, first I think, slide. I think I may have already That's it. Is oh, that it? That. One more, right? Too bad. Okay, that's where we started. That, you, you took the words out of my mouth. This is where <laughs> I started. This is SAP. This is San Antonio College in 1985. Now, I've seen things you still are drafting, but literally, uh, I came to San Antonio with a number of colleagues to UT San Antonio for the MFA program. Um, my dearest friends, uh, Gary and Debbie Shafter. MFA. Um, for these, the many of these are freshmen, what yes. is MFA? Oh, a Master of Fine Arts in Art. I came for a Master of Fine Arts in Art at UT San Antonio and discovered it really wasn't my field. And at the late age of, at that time, um, 30, something like that, at that time, I discovered architecture. My sister was an architect already, but I hadn't been paying attention to it. I saw one of her projects, and I'm like, oh, gee, it's sculptural. It's three-dimensional. It's kind of like art. I think maybe I'll like it. And I, oh, San Antonio. So I went to San Antonio College. The first class I took was descriptive geometry, and that was it. Really, literally, that was it. As soon as, you know, I don't know if you've done any of these kind of things, you know, two views, and you draw the third view or the fourth view. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was the start, next image. And then old school, real old school stuff. We drafted ellipses, dra drafted involutes. I got 100. These are, these are actually my homework. This is my homework. Next one. Oops. Oh, whoops. OK, so mark down a few little problems, auxiliary views, et cetera. It, I really, truly loved 
rotating the stuff, thinking three-dimensionally, which, which I think is absolutely necessary for, if you're going to be an architect, a spatial designer, this is what you do. You have to think around things in your mind. Um, next image. So I'm going to show you a little bit of my work, and there is a break between each oh, one. Sorry. I'm going to quickly show you the work I've done. I, again, I said I have a boutique practice, so I'm a full-time educator, which I'm really glad I picked that track right now in this economy. So I have my educator in a full-time job. I have my day job. But I like to have one project at a time, ideally. A few times I've had a couple projects. That's almost impossible. Right now, I don't have a project. It's a not particularly good economy right now. But this is one project. This is my house. Um, this is the house that I do live in and designed with my ex-husband and partner, Bob Sommel, who's the director of the School of Architecture at the University of Illinois at Chicago, which is very handy. My students transfer <laughs> there for the graduate um, This house won a number of awards. It won an AIA LA award, a design award. It won the first Architecture and Metropolitan Home uh, House of the Year award. It was the House of the Month for Architecture Record. It's been published all over the place. It happened to just make a splash because it's on a very, very busy intersection in Los Angeles. This is Olympic Boulevard, Highland Avenue. 20,000 cars pass every day. Nobody wanted to use this lot. <laughs> so this convinced, it was an empty lot, convinced the owners of the lot to sell it. And then the house was designed very specifically for that lot in a 1920s neighborhood, but it had to address really a freeway. Next shot, like that. So it's a 104 foot long metal wall. The wall is the barrier. So everything is, you know, we're both educators, didn't have a ton of money, so we, everything had to do double duty. So the wall, the house is the wall to the street. Next image, this very busy street with a bus stop. Next image, but the house also addresses the scale of the neighborhood on this side. All of that, um, again, addressing the street was a big issue, but the other issue was to maximize the backyard, to recover as much as possible, to have that Southern California dream lifestyle. Next, of the place. <laughs> so design, again, here it is. This is. I am mirroring, in this case, mirroring, except for the interiors component, because custom fabricated casework components, I couldn't afford those things. But they're coming, they're phased. They're phased in the project later. But uh, design, that, that's fine. Design the pool, next, that's fine. And landscape as well. Very important components of the house. And the pool does the same thing the house does. There's actually a one foot grade difference between what we're looking at here, like the right side to the left side. In which case, oh, water doesn't do that. You know, the water lies flat. So there had to be a, 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 a wall again uh, to address that race. So the deck, the deck actually raises up and becomes this, this continued, uh, continuous curve uh, against the back of the pool. And what I like about it in particular, it's a little bit, little bit schizophrenic. You get the low deck and the high deck. <laughs> Coexisting at one point. Next. Uh, next. And uh, we were also, uh, we participated in the San Jose State Museum of Art and Design. San Jose State University Museum of Art and Design competition were finalists. Um, came in second after W.W., Ron Whitty, Sarah Whiting, who are very good friends of mine. Sarah Whiting is the uh, dean at Rice. Also convenient, we're working on articulation. Re which re relatively recently. Uh, very recently. Yes. It's her second year being the dean of architecture at Rice University. And I will talk later, we have agreements with, uh, our Otis program has agreements with graduate schools to give our students advanced standing into their programs. And Rice will be one of them. We have some existing. Uh, next image, I'll go quickly through this project. The idea of this project was to multiply the conditions of the existing building. Next. Oh, actually, could you go back to? I didn't Two. describe it. Yeah, uh -huh. there. So this is the existing art building, which had a little bit of gallery in it. And the, and the project was to have a new museum of art and design, a much larger museum in this case, <coughs> beyond a gallery. And the site was there, essentially. Uh, different proposals cut away parts of the building. Our proposal multiplied the courtyard, multiplied the deck in kind of a sandwich condition. Next image. Uh, with voids cut in these slabs that would be circulation and landscape. Next. So there it is. It's interlocking figures. The new Museum of Art and Design is a top slab, which is the gallery's intermediate courtyard. 
in the sandwich, open with a couple classrooms. It's open below here with just uh, entry volume next. And instead of it might have killed. Maybe that's why we got second. We thought we were being complimentary to the muse, to the sort of museum and the gallery director because she she chose those colors for the building. We're like, okay, we're you know. She chose those colors for the existing building. So he took the existing building colors, two variations of each, uh, took unfolded the four sides of the top gallery box with the predominant colors and mixed them. So now it becomes a completely contextual mix, and we'll do these quickly. Mm -hmm. From the front side, you can see the sandwich. The classrooms are these folded, um, translucent uh, figures. Next. And so we're going to go around the building, and you can mm -hmm. see it being sort of camouflaged next. Camouflage and locking into the existing building. Again, all this stuff is existing. OK. OK, next. And one final project is an introduction to Otis, my most recent project, which took two years and actually is more complex than my house, is an interiors project. And that's, you know, don't, don't underestimate that kind of thing. This, this is Otis's main building, the Amundsen building, and this is the entry from the garage. So this was a new public entry for Otis College. Um, previously, you come in here and you see the cafe. You see everybody eating. Uh, which is a huge problem. So the scope of the project was to have a new security desk, a reception desk, uh, art display, but a visual barrier, a visual barrier so we do not see the cafe. We make a new entry zone. And um, there's uh, monitors for student work and activities. So next view. So there it is. It's the new piece. The, the materials um, match Otis. We have a, a metal fine arts building. So that was the idea, stainless steel tops to the desks that would last forever. Um, this is actually a modest material. It's whitewashed, birch ply. Um, this, these tops are actually fantastic. They were fabricated by um, Tom Farage, who is like the metal guy of Los Angeles. He does work for Frank Gehry, Tom Main, all the big guys. He's, you know, he's collaborated with them forever. He just built Tom Main's new studio. Does anybody here, do you guys know who Tom Main is? Morphosis, yeah. Pritzker Prize winner, yeah. Yeah. big guy, yeah. Designing important buildings, yes. Do y'all see Linda's love of descriptive geometry and those first slides in that? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Reception, closer view of reception desk, which has these slots. What I love about this, these pieces were welded, right? They're separate panels, they're welded, they're ground, they're brushed. Very nice metal work. Um, it was, so this is the most, comp that wall is the most complicated thing I've probably ever done. Freestanding, flagpole kind of construction, steel frame, bolted down into the floor. There's a lot of, there's structure in this, it's only six inches wide. It's made of birch ply. With a cus custom acrylic display cases on a fabric, this is a fabric panels. Um, it's in integrated some really nice um, hardware uh, system, a shelving system by Sagatsuni. Uh, once you, you know, if you continue and move into these fields, we integrate products into our designs. It's really important to know great hardware, the Hopala catalog, that's my favorite. You, you learn to love these things. I love the Hopala catalog. I love Sagatsuni hardware that locks, locks uh, glass or acrylic doors, the shelving system. Next, the guard's desk. Next and the back side to the cafe that has a tiny little hint of the geometry on the other side. Okay, so Otis, let me pass around some stuff here. And uh, there's certainly not enough for this group, so you guys share. Can you get that front light on again? And, and then you can keep, keep, we're gonna keep going with the images as I, oh, Just take I that look at one. one. There we go, all the others. Yeah, so go one more. Okay, let's hold there. All right, so I brought some, I'll tell you about Otis now. But um, sort of my practice and the, all of our instructors' practices are integral to our teaching. All the, all the instructors are active practitioners. 